welcome to Al's Science Lab. Behold, the future. This is the future of transmission filling. After you've done one too many stupid transmission fills. This is what I've rigged up and this is the future, folks. Everyone's wondering, will this old fuel pump pump? Will it pump oil? What up, everybody? Today's the big friggin' day. We're gonna start this bad boy up. I'm so freaking excited right now. I uh, Last night I was like starting up the Terminator and kind of flicking through the screens and I was like, shit, man, I could totally start this thing right now. But then I realized I was by myself. It's way more fun to do with friends. Um, also, I need, need to put oil in the trans, which has been interesting. Um, but yeah, today's the big day. We're gonna start this thing up and see what happens. We still gotta put um, put some coolant in. Engine's got oil in it. I've already um, shot out a bunch of, uh, I kind of like hooked up some fittings to my fuel lines and bled out all the shit inside it first. Um, and yeah, we got, I, I was playing around last night too with the uh, power steering pump. I was, it's good to really bleed those properly before you start up because you can blow the pumps. Um, yeah, so pretty much all I got to do is put some oil in the trans and mount the engine. I, I, I still haven't bolted it in yet because I mean, it's sitting on the bolts. I just got to tighten the nuts, but I still haven't, still haven't bolted it in because I just wanted to keep it a little bit wiggly for this whole time. So I could kind of push it around a little bit, but yeah, once I uh, do those two things, we're gonna fire this thing up. I got a couple friends coming out for the inaugural engine starting. My dad's coming out. He's bringing some fish, some of our finest at sea seafood, which I catch. And we're gonna cook it up on the barbecue, barbecue, and have a little, uh, have a little um, sort of party, little engine party. I mean, we're not driving it anywhere today. We know we still don't have drive shaft or exhaust, but it's kind of a big step is just getting it started and seeing what happens so I couldn't be more thrilled right now um, haven't heard from the drive shaft guy yet and now I'm getting antsy but I think it's a good thing because we still have to reinforce the subframe and I know if a drive shaft was to show up on my doorstep right now uh, I would probably go driving and probably F something up so it's probably good it isn't ready yet um, all I gotta do is put the front bumper back on, drive shaft. We got all a bunch of exhaust bits and pieces here. A little muffler action, a couple pipe, a couple bends, and one nice big stick. We're gonna build our exhaust. So yeah, today we're just gonna start this thing up. Um, we're gonna do some revving. Uh, I really hope that uh, it starts and that you guys enjoy. <laughs> so let's do this, yo. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> we've got her figured now. Oil's going in the trans. Take three. <laughs> Finally. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Get that I love the noise this thing makes. Okay, we got some liquids in her. We got some liquids in us too. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> uh, we're gonna do the setup wizard with you guys. A Terminator wizard. He has a wizard, Harry. Hey, Dumbledore. Uh, can you connect the battery, my dude? Da, 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 wizard. Wizard, he's a wizard. So you select that one, GMLS. 
eight cylinders, firing yeah, order. I'm gonna do liters. Six point two. Six point two liter. Target aisle speed. We're gonna start with a thousand, just so it's up there until we start doing some learning. Uh, I got a drift cam in there, two thirty-five to two fifty. So we're gonna go with that camshaft specs. If you're stock, you just go two thirty-five um, and below. So we go next. We are 58 tooth because we're Gen 4, 60 PSI. Injectors, OEM. Uh, no power added. One internal bar, map sensor. Start. Uploaded. Okay. Finish. TPS auto set, start. Slowly press pedal to the floor and slowly release. All right. Okay, so we're gonna try and build some oil pressure here. You ready, boys? Anchor over. I think I actually have to look in. Seventy-six. <laughs> oh. No fuel pump. Fuel pump. Attempt <laughs> yeah. number four hundred and seventy-seven. Yep. Fuel pump running. I'm just waiting for the screen to boot up here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> spoiler alert, we didn't start it. Uh, we tried our best, it got late, but there's just a few things I wanted to mention before I show you something, but we weren't, I didn't say it in the last clips, but because we were busy messing with stuff, but we weren't getting oil pressure on our, uh, on our Terminator there. Obviously, we didn't have any of the injectors of the coil packs plugged in. We wanted to turn it over and get oil pressure first, but, uh, it wasn't happening, it was just saying low ERR on the Terminator, which means low error. So, um, it, what we thought it wasn't getting oil pressure, so we weren't gonna start starting anything until we could verify. So what we did was I pulled the whole intake off and um, we thought that maybe it wasn't getting any oil pressure because uh, the valley cover gasket was on wrong or something. So, and also by taking the intake off and looking in the valley cover, we could see if there was oil or not. We could also do that with the valve covers, but it's a better place to look because that's what we thought the problem was. Uh, before we did that, we tested the sensor uh, to see if it had five volts and blah, blah, blah. And the resistance was good on the sensor and everything checked out. So we pulled it all off, pulled the valley cover off, cranked it over, boom, oil pressure right away. So we thought, okay, well, there's definitely oil. Um, Maybe it's something wrong with the sensor, even though we verified it. So we went over to Andrew's Cressida in the other bay, and we stole his oil pressure sensor. Plugged it in, boom, immediately. It wasn't even saying low ERR anymore. It said zero, zero pressure. So I was like, okay, well, obviously the other sensor was not working or something. So it said zero PSI, we cranked it over, boom, instantly oil pressure. So we probably had oil pressure the whole time uh, during all the fuckery, pulling my nice intake off. I had it all beautifully 
set up and then we had to rip it all apart again. But anyways, that's what you gotta do. You really gotta make sure you have oil pressure before you start an engine. So um, glad we verified all that. I don't know, we tested the oil pressure sensor, the one that I had on there, the stock one, and everything tested fine. So I don't know if the Terminator can't read that specific sensor or it was bad and we're just idiots. So anyways, we I ended up putting a, a Holly one on there. It's 250 bucks, but gotta gotta know what your oil pressure is. And um, anyways, by the time we finished friggin' with all that, it was me and Jeff and it was 12.30 at night and we went through five shop batteries doing all that cranking before. So by the time I got everything ready and set up, uh, we had no we had no batteries left. I was gonna have to pull the pull the battery from the heavy Chevy, and I looked at doing that. But there's like a fuse pa uh, box on top of it. It was gonna be I don't even want to dive into changing the battery on that thing. So we just gave up for the night, and it was probably for a good thing because for a good reason. I had some questions for uh, the tuner guy Chris before I wanted to continue doing anything. And so what I figured now is if you're starting up a, a a cammed out 6.2 liter with Terminator. Um, the, it won't, the computer won't go into learn mode until you've come up to temp and gone into open loop or closed loop. Uh, I forget which one it is, but when you come up to a temp, you go into some sort of loop and then the computer starts learning. So what you gotta do is, uh, I set the idle screw way up uh, on the throttle body there just to get it to idle. Um, I said it, it's like at 1400 RPM so that it would just run until it got into open loop. Anyways, it runs. <laughs> That's the exciting thing is it runs and I'm gonna show you guys right now because I'm friggin' stoked. So here we go. Here's a little run status for you guys. I got the heat cranked because I'm trying to lead coolant and, and stuff like that, but here we go. like a fucking machine. As you can see, it's running pretty good. Uh, that's with zero tuning. So we got a guy here on the island who's a wizard with a Terminator. He's gonna come over and tune it up for us. But uh, yeah, and uh, another thing that you might have noticed was that the fuel pressure was up to 70 pounds or something. It's supposed to be at 60. So um, from everything I've read online and on the forums, this fixes it. So this is, uh, a part by Rally Road Racing. I guess something to do with the return on the BMW tanks. It returns in one side of the saddle tank and there's some weird shit going on over there. So this part replaces the stock, um, whatever it is in there, we'll see when I'll show you guys. But this replaces something in there that restricts the flow on the return, which causes you to have a higher fuel pressure is what I'm assuming happens. So, this is the part from Rally Road Racing. It's a BMW siphon kit, it's called. I will put the part in the description. But um, 
hopefully this will fix our fuel pressure problem uh, and we'll get down around the 60 mark where we're supposed to be but um, yeah so we're gonna throw this in and I hope you guys liked the sound of the old girl here I got this greasy vent tube on the exhaust but it, it blew off pretty much instantly it's just it's too much for this shit um, pretty much dying inside of here right now with all the freaking gas fumes um, it's running really rich obviously for uh, safe start mode but um, I can't even think right now because I'm kind of high from it or maybe I should step out of here for a sec um, <laughs> but yeah I mean it runs really good um, I got all the exhaust pipe and tubing and stuff there that we're gonna use and a muffler to build the exhaust that'll be in another video obviously but uh, I got all that shit and I'm waiting on drive shaft so I don't really want to build the exhaust till the drive shafts in because then I can just build the exhaust as tight as possible in the tunnel there but yeah other than that I mean it's fired up super happy it's really really having a hard time here not driving it because it's ready to go I just need a drive shaft so but everything's coming along pretty good I guess. Startup was a bit of a pain in the ass, but I mean, nothing, Rome wasn't built in a day, so should be able to get it uh, started up and running and in good shape safely. That's the number one thing. We put all this money into an engine and uh, you want it to run the first time without blowing it up. So anyways, we'll get to going to putting this bad boy in. Uh, I'll show you guys how it's routed from the research I'm, I've done and hopefully that fixes our problem. Okay, well, I totally forgot to film, <laughs> but I'll show you what I did for that siphon, uh, that Rally Sport siphon. Uh, just opened up this side, and there's um, this thing is inside the tank. Oh, never mind. I still used it. It's it's back in the tank. But basically, you take that siphon, and there's three connections. The black one in the, in the middle of the T is the siphon to pick up fuel from this side of the saddle tank. So you just make sure that that's zap strapped on the bottom of the of the of where the old siphon is. You zap strap to that to the old siphon, and the gold or green fitting that you have with the siphon, depending on whether you're running two pumps or one. If you're running one pump, you're using the gold fitting. If you're using two pumps, you're using the green. That goes to the other side of the tank. So there's a hose that goes on the into the other side of the tank. All you do is you connect that hose to that one. And then there's the final other side of the T, which is blue. That comes uh, to your inlet from, because your return comes into the top of the tank. So there's a hose that goes through the um, bulkhead fitting and that goes onto the blue, which is, which is um, your fuel return coming in. So it's simple, just a T basically. All you gotta do is open up that bad boy and uh, connect up that T and hopefully we'll have better fuel pressure now. So I guess we can check. Uh, we can check to see what's what Yeah. What's what Yeah. Let me turn that down. I'm gonna cycle the pump twice, maybe even three times. One, one more time for good luck.
Okay, well, I'm extremely happy with that outcome. I didn't think it would be that easy, but fuel pressure has been sorted. So now, I really don't have much left to do. I, uh, I can't really even think of much. I mean, I can put a, I can mount my Terminator in the, in the glove box, which is take five minutes. Um, I'm gonna put it down in there, right in the glove box. I'm gonna cut a hole in the back of the glove box, and I don't know. Maybe I could put my uh, there's that cabin air filter thing that goes across here. I could put that in. I started cutting out this template for this box that I was telling you guys we're gonna kind of fill in. So I'm gonna get some ABS plastic or something. And we'll be able to fill in that box nice to hide all those wires. So, and then we can put our beers right there. Bingo. But other than that, oh yeah, and, the, and then the air intake, which I've kind of figured out. But I think I'll leave that for the next video. Uh, this one's probably been lengthy. We got the motor started. That is such a big win. Uh, Fuck, does it ever sound good? Yeah. Anyways, until next time, thanks for tuning in, yo.